G'day everyone, back underneath here in the Bedford, looking at the gearbox, and I've done a thing, the wrong thing, and that is I've put the wrong oil in here after I rebuilt the seals. Now I thought oil was just oil, and any oil would be fine, but apparently there's quite a big difference, because in these old gearboxes you've got brass, and some of the oils have phosphorus and sulfurs in them and they attack the brass in these and that's your synchros and all sorts of goodies in there so over time with the wrong oil in this that I've got at the moment it will be eating away at my brass so we'll get the bung out of it this is the bung down the back drain the oil out and then we'll go have a look at some oil packs and I'll explain what the hell is going on so we'll get this bung out I've got a nice clean bucket so I can see what's going on in here and we also have on the back of this a magnet so we'll take that into the garage and have a closer look at that see how much fuzz is on the end of it what we're looking at is the bung and on the back of the bung there is a magnet and the big thing about this is it catches all the rubbish every time I crunch the gears or do something silly all the fuzz comes off and gets stuck on here and this is a really good indicator of what is the health of your gearbox so if this isn't too bad because there are no chunks or this is all just very fine super fine ground pieces of metal off the teeth as it wears and there's nothing to panic in there that's good so we'll clean all that off throw it back in the hole with some new oil. So in the garage as promised and this is the dumbass thing I've done. I've gone and put a GL5 rating of gear oil into my gearbox and you go well, why is that bad? Well API is American Petroleum Institute GL5 so this is the rating decided by the American Petroleum Institute and it's got a picture of gearbox on there so you'd assume it was safe to use in a gearbox yes it is but in modern gearboxes but not in old bedford gearboxes because bedford gearboxes with the turn of 300 and probably 400 and so on have brass in there they have brass synchros and the problem with this gl5 is it has a lot more phosphorus and sulfur in it and those two components eat away at your brass synchros and will wear them out prematurely and no one wants to be premature. So we're peering through the side cover, which I've taken off the side of the gearbox, and in there you can see brass, and lots of it. So that's why we need to run the right oil, otherwise that stuff's just going to get eaten away. What you actually want is a GL4 rating. And a GL4 rating like this, even though it doesn't say GL4 in it, it is actually a GL4 if you look in the spec sheet. The big thing about that is it has a greatly reduced amount of phosphor and sulfur in it, and therefore it will greatly increase the life of your synchros in your gearbox and won't eat them away. And so you ask, well how did I end up in this diddly of a pickle? It's because I just needed some gearbox oil and didn't do my research properly and it said gearbox. So that's how I got into this bit of a mess. But you'll notice that this is a 90, SAE 90, is what is recommended in the turn of 300, maybe even the 400, I'd have to go and have a look. And that is for temperatures above zero degrees centigrade. And you want a SAE 80 for operating below, but most of you guys are probably operating from zero degrees centigrade up for ambient air temperatures. So that's what you need. This stuff is good. It's about $230 for a 20 litre tub, but it's well worth it looking after your gear. Okay, I'm going to attempt to give a non-technical uh, explanation of what's going on with these extra sulfurs, sulfur and phosphorus. Well, it's great on steel gears, because what it does is it puts down a protective layer on the gear surface. And every time the gear rotates around and strikes against the other gear, it grinds that protective surface off so therefore it becomes a sacrificial uh, wear surface rather than grinding the gear away so it 
TL5s greatly increase your differential life. And differentials run at, I don't know, I'm guessing 30-40% more pressure on the gears, on the strike surfaces, than in your gearboxes. It's just the, the gearing and ratio sort of things, just the way they work. So GL5 good for diffs, GL5's not good for brass gearboxes, brass bits in your Bedford gearboxes. What you want is a GL4. So if you run a GL5 in your Turner brass gearbox, what that does is it still lays down the protective layer on the steel, which is okay, but it also lays down the protective layer on the brass, and every time um, it's working away, it will strip off the protective layer off the brass, but it bonds that hard to the brass, it also strips off it some of the brass with it at the same time. So that's what erodes or eats away at the brass synchros in your old Turner gearbox. So there you go, that's the boring story of what oil you need to use in your gearbox. Uh, this is just an image of the uh, manufacturer's plate on the side and you can see uh, the oil ratings there, 80 EP and 90. And if we go to another page in the service manual, you'll see in here it's got Temperature ranges, so above 0 degrees C, SAE 90, that guy there. Now the interesting thing is, it says to use uh, without EP additives, so that is extreme pressure additives, and that is the phosphorus and high levels of sulphur. So the GL4 still has it in there, but not as much. Alright, we'll sign off, we'll see you later, thanks for watching.